Yeah, the thing is, it's some it's something that I've I already knew. There's there's so many names in the UFC that I've sparred with, and some of them will give you some horror stories of what I've done, you know. And but and none of them would ever uh, downplay the level that I'm at from after sparring me. Um, so I've always been confident in myself to know what I can do. My ego is definitely wanting to just prove that to everybody else. But at the same time, I know, like, uh, I, I already know the standard that I'm at. It will be good to just affirm it with the world watching. Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new episode of Smack Talk with Sandu. It's my first one of 2024 and also my guest this week is my first returning guest since I started my show on my YouTube channel and it's the best time to be speaking to him. He is very much in the news. He signed a contract with the UFC at the back end of 2023 after exploring free agency. He has a fight book. He's going to be making his UFC debut at UFC 299 in Miami, Florida on March 9th. And that will start a brand new chapter in his combat sports career. It is the one and only MVP, Michael Venom Page. Mike, what's yeah, happening? I'm good, man. Good. Good to see your face. Yes. I feel like I haven't seen you in a, in a, in a long time. And uh, even down to the, uh, the direction of the, uh, our journeys... Because I remember you coming to my gym at Shoot Fighters early in my career. We've done, mm. you know, so many different, work, so much work together as well back then. Yeah. And then you jet off and you're doing some stuff and yeah, we've come back around till now. So it's been a, it's been a long time. It, it, it really is. And, uh, you know, I always say to people like, you know, I try and be as unbiased as I possibly can uh, in this game. I'm obviously going to have some biases towards, you know, people from the UK and fighters from the UK and even more so fighters from London. But like you said, you know, very early in your career, you were lucky enough uh, and I was lucky enough rather than fortunate enough to to get the access and to cover you from the early days. And here you are, the biggest stage possible. I guess where I'd like to start, Mike, is and I know you kind of probably been through this already a few times, but I just love to kind of now looking back after it's been a couple of months. What was it like? last year to go into free agency, uh, go through the various negotiations and then finally kind of land that UFC deal? Yes, yeah, so obviously, it, to be fair, I have to say it did feel good. Not in a, it sounds weird to say it this way, like uh, there was a sense of relief of being free because I have a good relationship with Bellator um, and, I, and I was happy there, but there was at the same time, I knew there was more for me. Um, I felt undervalued there um and just wanted to explore so even if i ended up going back to bellator it would be at the kind of value that i see myself at is is what i kind of think so there was a there was a nice sense of relief and freedom to kind of first be out uh then there was a lot of attention so uh that was really nice to be fair uh it, it definitely reaffirmed what i thought of myself and uh, how i feel like i should have been uh appreciated and, you know, getting to flirt with different different organizations back and forth and speaking to different people was, again, just very nice. It makes you feel good. Then it dragged on a little bit too long. Uh, not in the sense that I was worried about not getting anything. It was more just like, okay, I'm now ready to to fight. But there was, a, there was still a few uh, things that you have to, I had to over, hurdles I had to overcome with regards to the Bellator contract. Nothing negative is just part and parcel of, uh, of, of the normal agreements. And uh, then, yeah, then we started to get into deep talk, serious talks, uh, putting uh, money down and stuff as well. And again, it was just it was just good to know something was going to come. And then finally, uh, confirming that, you know, it's going to be the UFC. It was, a, it, was a, it was an exciting time. It was it, it was really I was like, it's, it's still a bit surreal. And I feel like I don't officially class myself as a UFC athlete until I've stepped in that cage. And that's when it's going to be real to me. I feel you, man. Um, You know, with regards to free agency, it's still something that we don't really see too many fighters opt to to try. Uh, you've been through that, you know, experience. I'm sure you've got 
you know, fighters in the gym asking you about, you know, your process. Do you, would you like to see other fighters go through the same process you went through? Is it case by case? What kind of advice would you give anyone now that you actually have been through that process as a free agent? It, it's, it is definitely case by case. Um, again, I, I was really confident in myself and my value. Um, some people, they need to be realistic with themselves and you may not be a, a, as wanted. Uh, so you have to, you know, take, make your decisions based on things like that. But free agency, I think is definitely good. I, I, it, <clears throat> it's more relevant now that there are competing organizations that are doing well. Whereas before it's, you know, it's UFC or nothing pretty much. Uh, so there, there was no real free agency. There's no real point to be in a in free agency. It just means you're unemployed and that's, and that's it. Um, so I think, like I say, timing is everything. Timing was perfect. The fact that there are competing organizations as one championship, PFL, um, so on and so forth. And it helped with the negotiations, definitely. And obviously now you're a you know, UFC fighter. I know you said, you know, you know, classify yourself as a UFC fighter until you step in to that octagon. But for so many years, being a mixed martial arts fighter, I'm sure you've had so many conversations when people ask what you do for a living and you tell them, yeah, I'm a, I'm a mixed martial arts fighter. I fight for, you know, I fight for this organization. They're like, oh, you mean like the UFC? And you're like, probably like, yeah, kind of like the UFC, but it's a little yes, different. Yes. And now you can actually just be like, yeah, actually, just like the UFC. <laughs> yeah, legit, legit. You know, obviously, it's that it's that age old thing that uh, MMA is just synonymous with the term UFC. People don't really understand the difference. I've actually had friends argue that MMA is completely separate to UFC, um, and it's just funny to get to the point now where people are like, "Oh, do you, you do UFC," and I'm going to be like. Nah, Oh, actually, yeah, <laughs> I do. Um, but yeah, no, it's a, it's yeah, so it's a weird place to be. Like I said, there's still moments where it's still not quite re real, and that's, that's why I feel like I need to step in the cage. That's a crazy thing. You haven't even made your UFC debut yet, and it's been nothing but excitement. Like, what's been your reaction to the reaction from fans, from media, from the whole community with you signing to the UFC? Yeah, I kind of anticipated it would be as such, simply because literally since the first time I stepped in the cage, the question has been, when are you going to the UFC? When are you going to the UFC? When? For years now, it's only been that. And for years now, there's a lot of people that negatively or positively have kind of suggested that they want to see me in the UFC. Some people are like, oh, I wouldn't last in the UFC, but they still want to see me there to, to prove their point. And some people are like, no, but I want you to fight those people and beat those people in the UFC as a fan and, and a supporter. So... Yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely exciting. It's definitely kind of gone the way I, th I thought it would go and slowly just getting better and better, especially as, you know, as the fight gets closer and closer. Yeah. And you know what? Putting uh, other people's expectations to the side, like just purely as a, a competitive fighter and a competitive athlete, you know, outside of the stage being so big in the UFC, also just the, the level of competition available there. Has that also been a driving factor for you to test what you've got and just test your skills against the absolute best in the world? Yeah, the thing is, is some is something that I've, I already knew. There's... There's so many names in the UFC that I've sparred with and some of them will give you some horror stories of what I've done, you know, and, but and none of them would ever uh, downplay the level that I'm at from after sparring me. Um, so I've always been confident in myself to know what I can do. My ego is definitely wanting to just prove that to everybody else. But at the same time, I know. Like, uh, I, I already know the standard that I'm at. It will be good to just affirm it with the world watching. Um, but I already know what I can do, man. Like, uh, and I'm, I, I am excited to just to, to prove that, but I'm not doing it to prove that, if that makes sense. Yeah, of course. How quickly after signing did the UFC come to you with Kevin Holland, UFC 299, March uh, 9th in, in Miami, Florida? Yeah, to be, you know, honestly, I wanted to fight a lot sooner. Um, uh, a lot sooner. I actually wanted to, uh, I think it was in December I wanted to fight, but it was very close. Um, it was very close after everything just kind of happening. Um, then I was offered 
January, but January is a bit of a, an annoying time. I feel like it's in Canada, but January is a bit of an annoying time um, to fight, uh, especially if just coming back and then training partners are usually away for Christmas and it's just hard to get them in to work and so on and so forth. Um, and then we just, you know, we're still bouncing around different names. Uh, Holland landed and I, I knew he's the type of person that would say yes to it. Uh, he's that he's that kind of guy and I respect him for it. And because um, I know there's going to be people, not in the sense that they're scared of me, but it's I'm a bit of a wild card. It's like, yeah, let me wait and see who, how he gets dealt with first and then I'll put my hand up for the next one. Um, but yeah, Kevin Holland is not about that. He's like, yeah, I'll be, I'm first in line. I'm definitely happy to do that. Um, and then, yeah, they they told me there's a show in March. It's like, that's perf ample amount of time to get ready to the level that I want to get ready. And yeah, this, this is this is us on our way there. But it, what made it even better that it landed in Miami where all my family is as well. So it was just, yeah, it's, it just worked out the way it's supposed to work out. Yeah, and these UFC pay-per-views, they've become a different beast, I think, post-pandemic. Like, the the show they put on, the the traffic they get, the interest, they, yeah. they're breaking all these gate records. Uh, yeah, the fans yeah. are selling out all these shows, like, in, in a heartbeat. You know it's going to be an electric atmosphere in there. By the way, do you know the bout order? Do you know when on the card you're going to be fighting? Like, will you open the pay-per-view uh, main card? Or I'm after um, Burns and Who's Burns fighting again? I forget who Burns is fighting. But I'm after him. So I'm like, on the main card, I'm, I think I'm like third from the top or fourth from the top. There's like five of us. So it's, yeah. there's a, I'm not the first fight. I think I'm the second fight. And then there's three other fights after that. I Don't quote me on that, but I believe that was what I saw. Yeah. Um. Uh, so yeah, yeah. So it's a good slot. It's a good slot to be at. And listen, I have to ask, you are a showman, right? And you had a lot of creative freedom while you were in Bellator, things are a little bit different in the UFC. And I'm wondering yeah. if you've had a conversation with them to figure out a happy medium where you can still express yourself and express your personality when it comes to music, the walkout and what you're able to wear. You know what? I'm a man that would prefer to ask for forgiveness and permission. They seem to be you know, open to giving me some grace as they know that you know that's what they bought into themselves. Uh, but yeah, I might have to push the boundaries a little bit uh, on that one. But yeah, no, they definitely seem, you know, willing to kind of help support that MVP brand going forward. So um, uh, we'll see. We'll see. Like I said, I may just be an apology. <laughs> I respect it. I respect it. Um, since the news came out, I've just been kind of following your social media and you've been you've been very busy. Uh, so mm -hmm. I want to just touch on a couple of things. I saw you pay Tom Aspinall a visit and mm -hmm. you spent some time with him. And I'm just kind of curious uh, how that came about, why that came about and what that experience was like to to train with him. Yeah, so it was, it was kind of like killing two birds with one stone, to be fair. we was uh, I've started a, a new podcast um, surrounding combat. Uh, it's not going to be me doing it per se. Um, it's almost like the the Mac life. They're going to be my eyes and ears of the world, if you know what I mean. Um, called The KO Show. It's Kaz and Oli. Uh, two of my friends, I managed to put them together and I think it's a match made in heaven. They uh, We did a couple of shows and or we did one show, sorry, and it just went crazy. It's done really, really well. Uh, I had spoken to Tom Aspinall. Uh, I went to Michael Bispin's um, uh, talk uh, show uh, in London at the O2 Indigo and spoke to Tom then, we exchanged numbers, spoke a little bit and then he was like, yeah, I'd love to, well, first you want to kind of have you on the show and speak to you, but then while I'm down, then let's let's train together, let's do that. And he was you know, more than up for it. He, he had already suggested it in our conversation um, because we have similar movement patterns and you know that the fact that he's a heavyweight that moves like that is for me is just massively impressive. And yeah, so we ended up going down there. And like I said, two birds with one stone. Went down there, did my training session with the guys first. And they got a lot of heavyweights down there. So it was just great to work with big guys and have to try to, you really have to be skillful. I have to be, not only try to be strong, but skillful. Because you're not going to, you're not going to beat them in a the strength area. Um, so I really have to uh, really get my, my, uh, my skill juices up uh, for that one. And then we, we had him on the podcast afterwards, which was great as well. So. 
Yeah. I love it. Have you done that many times in the past? Because obviously I just assume you're just a London shoot 24-7 kind of guy, but kind of going to a completely different gym, a different camp and kind of, you know, training with different body types. And and of course, Tom Aspinall, it doesn't get any better than that in terms of how yeah. elite he is, interim UFC heavyweight champion. Um, is that something that you might explore, try and do a little bit more moving forward? Or you yeah. Yeah, definitely. I think uh, just having a feel of different bodies definitely just just helped. So when we went uh, when we was over in um, went to Vegas to do some uh, UFC media, went to the PI and just the facilities over there are unbelievable. And definitely we were like, have to come back, have to come back, have to do some training with some of the guys. There's so much guys that go through there. Um, you got Couture uh mma down the road as well like i was like no i have to come back and work with some of the bodies down here and my coach is like yeah definitely i've we've tapped in and tapped out with different places before but i've gone to gym more so to do sparring specific to my opponents um but never just kind of stayed and just done training but yeah it was good good fun and just quickly uh regarding tom obviously he's in a bit of a weird spot right because he's the interim heavyweight champion what do you do if if you're tom do you wait to see what happens between John Jones and Stipe Miocic and, and fight the winner? Or do you take a fight, you know, in the short term just to kind of stay busy? What would you do if you're in this situation? Um, me personally, I would take a fight. Um, and the reason I say that is because don't let, in my opinion, don't let John Jones be your Moby Dick and you lose sight and just completely focus and because I've done that before in kickboxing before where I, I had a guy that had beaten me as a Canadian guy had beaten me exceptional fighter I think he's a hockey player now actually but yeah exceptional athlete um and it just bugged me I'm one of those guys I'm petty like second somebody's beating me I'm like I'm gonna get you back gonna get you back he was in my category was at opposite opposite ends of the uh the the grid build my way and I'm like I got him in the final I, like, I had a semi-final first He's won his semi-final, got him in the final. And I'm already prepping exactly what I'm going to do, exactly what I'm going to do to him. Da, da, da. And I lost the fight. I lost my semi-final fight to a guy that I've destroyed before. And I beat him again many times afterwards. But I was so fixated on the next opponent that you kind of just lose sight of just preparing for everybody. And I think that will come. I see you as the champion now see yourself as a champion now and you have to beat everybody anyway. So even after John Jones, you're still going to have to keep beating people. So don't let him be your Moby Dick. So me personally, I would just, you know, keep busy, stay active, take a fight. I respect it. Um, and obviously you mentioned that you did go to the UFC headquarters in Vegas. You went to the Performance Institute. Just that experience alone, not having access to facilities like that. Yeah. Yeah. What was that whole experience like for you? unbelievable it's like it was it genuinely was like i'd just been i'm a new player i'd just been signed to a club let's just say man united <laughs> just been signed to a club and then they're taking me around their facilities and I, it, it, it was just wow like this is what is available for you on tap where in this sport that just didn't exist or doesn't exist for so many people that are training exceptionally hard. Like being an MMA fighter, being an MMA athlete is so difficult. So uh, you put so much stress and strain on your body and then you then have to go out and figure out how to make the rest happen in terms of physio, in terms of ice baths, in terms of saunas and so on and so forth. The recovery side, you then have to go out of your way to go and figure it out. But that all in one place is just... It's, it's exactly what every athlete would want. You know what I mean? Aside of actually, you know, we, we get paid to to fight, aside of the fighting and being prize fighters, being treated like a, a, an actual professional athlete uh, is definitely uh, key. And it, it just felt, it genuinely did feel like a step up. And I'm not even talking about the fighting. It just felt like a step up just in professionalism and, uh, you know, what they have, you what you have access to. And I saw you put on the UFC gloves. Uh, you had uh, a bit of a photo shoot there with the UFC kit, the Venom kit. By the way, Venom and Venom. Tell me, tell me yeah. there is someone in some marketing team or marketing department that is has been reaching out to figure out like a separate sponsorship deal because that just makes all the sense in the world, man. Not, not just yet, but let me let me knock Kevin Holland out, and then uh, I'm I'm sure they'll I'm sure they'll be a knocking at the door. How was the gloves though? Like just the, the gear, the gloves, everything. How was it like to kind of wear them and the kind of like get gear, the photo shoot out of the way? The gear was clean. 
the gear was clean. It looked amazing. I put it on. I was like, yeah, like, like wow. I remember taking a picture and the guy was like, oh, this picture, is, this is this one's going to be for the game. I was like, oh, shit, I forgot I'm, the game. Yeah, I'm going to be in the game. Um, so that was exciting. The gloves, in all honesty, not that good. Mm. I was I was quite, I was actually disappointed, comparatively speaking. Um, nowhere near as comfortable, to be fair. That, it's not going to change anything, you know. I, I'd I'd fight in kitchen gloves and be fine, you know. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, literally, whatever it is, whatever I need to do. I remember I, I fought with no gloves <laughs> not too long ago. So I, I'll 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 figure it out. Does that's never going to change anything for me? But yeah, definitely not as a snugger fit. Yeah. And the other thing I, I kind of noticed that you brought up and this really got my juices flowing. It got me super excited. And it's the prospect. It's kind of like trajectory that you're now potentially going to be going on. Leon Edwards, Michael Venom Page, UFC welterweight championship, maybe yeah, a stadium yeah. show in the UK. I mean, yeah. you've put it out there. I'm sure you're manifesting this, but was this also part of the kind of, I guess, um, the deal? Getting this UFC contract done. Oh, I could do a big show with Leon in the UK. To be fair, it wasn't actually a uh, part of it. Um, there's too many moving parts to kind of see that as what you'd want to or expect to happen simply because, you know, I, I don't think it's going to happen, but he could lose. So me projecting all this kind of thing, he could not have the belt by the time it came to the, you know, me wanting to challenge for the title. But now that I'm signed, you know what I mean? And I honestly do respect him as an athlete. I do see him as a, you know, I love his story, love his journey. Um, we're cool. But where his prize fight is, I can just see it's so good for the UK. I can see it being so massive in the UK. And it's un, it's a, it's a, it's a story that hasn't been happened yet. No two British MMA fighters fighting for the belt. Whatever the result, the UK wins. You know what I mean? Um, so I, I just see it now. And, and, I, and I, I'm, like you say, I'm just manifesting that. Um, and, I, and I'm sure it will happen. Oh, what do you make of his like um, his game, his skill set, you know, in terms of what he brings to the cage? How do you kind of assess him and break him down just as a fighter? Well, the thing is, you you have to respect who he is because he took the hard route to the top. There's so many people that came in and had like a little bit of a buzz and then they get pushed forward to going straight to the top. He took the hard route and beat everybody. You know what I mean? Everybody they wanted to put in front of him, beat everybody. And then they kept putting another person and another person, and another person, and another person, almost like not wanting him to get to the title. And now he got it. You know what I mean? He had to do it twice, did the first time in a spectacular fashion and then proved everybody wrong the, the second time. Um, He's an exceptional athlete and I, I already see you as the best in the world and I respect you as the best in the world. This is why it's going to put me in a different place mentally. It's going to make me train to a certain degree and a certain level. And I still, after all of that, what I've just said about him, I still see myself beating him. So as much as I respect him, uh, I, I definitely see, I know what I can do as an athlete. I hope it happens. I hope he, you know, is able to defend the belt and keep the belt long enough for you to string together a couple of wins and just maybe get the Michael Chandler treatment. It's just like fast track MVP after two or three wins into that yeah. title picture just for the fact that they can put on an incredibly big show in the UK. Um, a couple of more things and I'm going to let you go. I know you've had a busy, busy day. Um, ben Whitaker, I had no idea who this guy was, Mike, right? Uh, until I saw him until I saw him fight a couple of weeks ago. And yeah. I was like, yo, he reminds me of MVP. <laughs> I'm just wondering if you were aware of him, if you know him um, and what you made of his performance and, and how he kind of does his thing in the squared circle as a boxer. I had seen him before. It was a clip that I had watched a long, a little while ago. It was in the, uh, it was in the Olympics actually. Then I saw another video of him, similar similar kind of thing, like slipping. I was like, oh, this guy's slick, man. He's slick with it. Um, so then uh, I hadn't really followed him per se afterwards, but that last fight, I was there. Oh, no way. 
Yeah, I was actually there. I was actually there. So because I'm a I'm 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 a friend of both Aziz and Boatsi, to be fair. Boatsi actually used to go to school with my younger brother, uh Kalon Page. And um so I, I was just interested in seeing that. I didn't actually pay attention to who else was on the on the card. I actually literally went there for the main event. And then when I saw uh yeah, um Ben Whitaker, I was like, oh yeah, that's the guy. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, and yeah. This this guy should be good. And I was there with my missus and I was telling her, oh yeah, this guy is he's 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 quite he's quite flashy. And she loved the fight. Like she she found it uh, amazing and what he did amazing and same, my soul did I. Um it's always gonna be the age old thing. Can he continue to do it at the higher level? Obviously, he got bronze, I believe, in the in the thing. And I think it was because it's a very traditional boxer. He, he found it a little bit harder to do the slickness. But his basics, this is what I think is actually key about him. His basics are clean. The body shot that he landed, this is the, the one-twos, they're clean. The added bit that people more focus on, that's not his whole style. That's not his game. And it's the same thing for myself. People think I only just practice flashy stuff. My basics are more important than any spin kick, any jump kick, any jump knee that I can do. It's all about the basics. That's what really wins me fights. And I can see he's got that in him as well. So yeah, definitely impressed. Yeah, like he went viral. Like to an you've yeah. experienced this with some of your antics yeah. and the cage and celebrations, but that's exactly what he reminded me of. I was like, oh, I've seen this happen before in MMA. It was a, it was a great thing to see. It really is. Again, also another uh, you know UK fire doing that. Um, yeah. One final thing, I've heard you speak about this before. I don't think I've ever asked you about this, and it kind of goes way back to when you were first entering the game and kind of figuring out the showman part of the fight game and i know you've referenced the rock and the attitude era in terms of an inspiration to figure out how to to speak on the mic and have your promo and have a pose and and all that kind of stuff could you just kind of speak to going back in the day and, and getting that inspiration and how integral that's been in terms of bringing the whole mvb experience to the fans on fight night well that's exactly it literally what you just finished with is the mvp experience that was my goal from the jump street. I don't want it to be an MVP fight. It was an MVP experience. There's a fight involved in that, but there's also the walkout. There's also the, the one-liners. There's also the antics, the dancing. Is, and then even, the most importantly, a part, big part of my brand is the celebrations. That's what people remember me for. Um, so yeah, like when I say it was in massively important to... Sat, have sat down and gone over that. I feel so many fighters, and this is another reason why I feel uh, Leon did end up getting the uh, the harder road to the top because he didn't pay attention to that. It's not just about winning fights. Leon is the person that you go to watch fight. MVP is the person you go to have an experience, have a, a night that you will never forget because he brings an experience uh, on that night. So... Um, it's very key to not enough fighters uh, focus on the fact that they are a brand and they solely focus on fighting. Don't get me wrong. Winning fights and being a fighter is number one priority. But then there's so much more to it. There's so much more to it. Even down to, I see fighters getting so frustrated at doing interviews and this and that and they get, you know, they get tired of it. And then I'm like, this is part of your brand. And I've, I've understood it even when I'm tired, like today, I understand the importance of what you guys do for us and what you guys do for the community of MMA. And this is why I'm always ready to, you know, do it and 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 market myself because we don't get that much time on a mic or anything. So you have to be very uh, specific and very intentional about your words that you're using, uh, phrases that you're using and just the, the short time that we have. Absolutely. And that's a, a beautiful way to kind of almost end the conversation. March 9th, Mike, UFC 299. You're making yep. your UFC debut against Kevin Holland. How mm. does this fight play out? Give me the Michael Venom Page experience for fight week, for fight night, and also the prediction for the fight itself. Um, I'm definitely going to show out. I'm going to show up, show out. Um, I think Kevin Holland is just that person. He's just that guy as well. He's he's not coming to to play games, but at the same time. I genuinely feel like we could probably record a podcast of the kind of back and forth that me and him are going to have in the cage. Um, and it's going to be, it's going to be that it's going to be a little bit of fun, a little bit of hazing back and forth. 
landing shots, figuring each other out, not only uh, physically, but psychologically as well. That kind of uh, uh, playing cat mouse until I figure out, ah, I've locked in all the little strings that I attach and I figure out what pulls you. I figure out how to pull you left, pull you right, how to push you back, bring you towards me. And that's when I become extremely dangerous and I start landing those big shots, start demoralizing you. You probably start to talk a little bit less, a little bit less and start to focus more on your fighting. That is when I, I, I will know that he's in danger because when he, when he has to switch off this here and solely focus on fighting because he realizes what direction is going in is when I've got you. And that is when something spectacular comes out. I land something big. Everyone goes crazy. He falls on the floor. And then have a celebration for you guys. Ready? Celebrate. Everyone goes crazy again. We shake hands. Hug it out. Much respect to him for being that first person to grace me to the UFC cage. And then I go and have fun with my family. Man, I am hyped. This is a stacked, <laughs> this is a stacked card, and this is the fight I'm most looking forward to. I'm telling you right now. I'm just being honest. There's a title fight on the card. It's it's super stacked. But MVP Kevin Holland, that's the fight I'm most interested in. I can't wait. I'm buzzing. I'm I'm like hyped for it. Um, <laughs> that's the best of luck. I can't wait just to see how fight week progresses for you and the whole, like you said, the MVP experience on the mm -hmm. UFC platform plays out for the very first time, and. Best of luck on fight night and uh, hopefully we'll speak to you again as this UFC journey continues. Definitely, 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 definitely. Good to see you, my brother. Thank you for having me on.